Welcome traders. In this video today, I'm going to be going through four price action signals that you need to know. These signals show you market framework. Understanding market framework is crucial if you want to consistently be on the right side of the market. I'm going to be going through these four signals are the most important signals you need to know. Here is the master pattern. Make sure to have a very good look at this pattern. Pause and just observe it. You will learn in this training four core price action signals that will help you understand market framework and behavior. If you have a close look at this graph I created, this is the exact structure and framework that the market follows consistently and repeatedly. Over here we have got these contraction boxes which I'm going to be going into detail now. Price breaks below the box and goes into this trending phase where it starts to form another contraction box. Then we have this whipsaw action which liquidates the masses and the retailers. If you understand how institutional trading works, they play with such large positions. The only places they can enter the market is when the masses make a mistake. If you notice these corner points, we've got these massive wicks. These are all the liquidation points where the masses have actually had their stop losses hit. And these are the exact points where the banks and institutions fill their positions and enter into the markets. These are the zones that we want to focus on when getting into very good trade setups. Your real success lies in understanding that point where the masses are going to make a mistake. These are institutional entry points. This is the points where the masses exit at unfavorable prices and where the institutions enter the markets. What happens here, we've got this contraction zone, then price expands out and down, up and down, up and down, completely confusing the market and liquidating whether you get in a short, it liquidates you, whether you get in long, it liquidates you. I'm sure you've experienced this before. These swing high and low points are the exact points where the masses make a mistake, they get their stop losses hit, and these are the points where you want to enter. Now, in this course I'm going to be going through today, it's going to be showing you how to do this strategy. Your entry point is where the retailer's stop losses are located. Now, how do you calculate this exact point with these four signals I'm going to share with you? Number one, the contraction signal. Pay attention when you see simultaneous higher lows and lower highs. See, the market will get to a point where it creates this squeezing of price and you will see a higher low and a lower high. And you mark a box around this area. This becomes the contraction phase signal. This is the reset point in the market where the banks plan their next move. It's the start of the market framework structure. And we draw these boxes around them. These are called contraction boxes. And then you see price will break the top of the box through this expansion phase and break the bottom of the box. Once it has broken the top and the bottom, that is where you get a confirmed contraction box and you can draw a line. And this becomes the value line, the zero point where the market makers, institutions balance their books. Contraction boxes represent the starting point for the next significant move. It is a defined zone where the market makers do two-way business with the buyers and sellers. They use this time to assess overall supply and demand to plan their risk controlled strategy. Boxes help you define expectations of upcoming market behavior. It serves as a leading volatility signal. They provide you with banks starting accumulation point for their book of business. These boxes are basic building blocks of all market framework that dictates future price movement. These contraction lines become extremely strong friction levels and framework structure to give you a point to work off of. As you can see, we've got the origin point over here, this contraction block. Price breaks up, breaks down, breaks up, breaks down. And you can see we've got this point of origin line. And look how price goes to the top, breaks to the bottom, goes to the top, breaks to the bottom. See, this is the center point of the bank's balancing books. And they make money on every one of these swing highs, swing lows, swing highs. But they keep coming back and gravitating around this point of origin. It is noticed as the zero point where price expands out of in a wave-like structure. It is seen as a multi-leg expansion up and down. 
the point of origin. Within it, we get more contraction points which create market framework. We can use these to understand where we positioned and where to find entries. Number two, liquidity signals. These are the swing high and swing low points within market framework. These are the money levels. So every swing high and swing low we get outside the contraction box creates a confirmed liquidity line. We draw these lines on top and these become entry points and exit points for our trades. They are extremely accurate barometers of how we can understand market structure. When price has expanded above and below the contraction box, you get confirmed liquidity. We mark these liquidity lines. These are the points at the swing highs and swing lows. We call these multi-leg expansions out of the contraction zone. So we get the point of origin over here and we get these expansion points, high, low, high, low, high, low. It's this whipsaw action above and below the contraction. It is created to access liquidity from the retailer's mistakes. It is designed to trick the retailer to make the wrong decision so that it can fill its massive orders by the retailer's mistakes. Liquidity lines form after the expansion starts happening. So you got this contraction box that's formed. Price expands above and below. We draw the line. It is now confirmed. At each expansion point above the box, we draw the liquidity line below it. So it expands up, we draw this liquidity line. It expands down, we draw this, draw this liquidity line. It expands up, we draw this liquidity line. It expands down, we draw this liquidity line. And as you can see, these become targets. And the further away price moves from this point of origin, the bigger this whipsaw action gets. Almost as if it expands outwards and creates these arranging structures. These are multi-leg expansions out of the contraction zone. So we got this whipsaw. See what happens is price breaks above, the retailer thinks it's going long, they enter a long position and then it drops down, it liquidates them. Then they think it's going down and they enter a short position and then it drops up, liquidates them. And it keeps doing this until the banks have filled all their orders and then it goes into the trending phase where the institutions can drive the price and exit at favorable prices. Notice that the swing high and the low points these big wicks. These are liquidation points where the big orders are being filled. And if you look at your charts, you will notice that always the swing highs and swing lows, you're gonna get these big wicks. This just shows us that this is the position where these massive orders are being filled, where the retailers are getting stopped out and the institutions are entering into the market off of the retailer's liquidity. This mass liquidity is created by retailers who made a mistake. This is where the liquidity is. The exact place the retailers make a mistake is where the banks enter the market. And this is the perfect entry zone. These are reversal zones. Number three, indecision signal. When price reaches these swing high and swing low points, we look for indecision candles. These are strong indications where price is finding this reversal point. Since we get these big wicks, we know these liquidations are happening. We know there's an imbalance in the buyers and sellers now, and these indecision candles let us know where this turning point is happening. He has more examples of these reversal points. Price makes its way down, clearly shows these dojis, price up dojis so these are in strong indicators showing us that point where the retailers made a mistake and the institutions are getting in indecision candles are a strong indication of a reversal in the market we can use them as signals to enter he has some examples of indecision candles candles are where the buyers and sellers find equilibrium in the markets it's usually the accumulation phase that creates them therefore it becomes liquidity zones it represents reversals he has some examples of indecision candles we can use indecision candles as these reversal signals as well as excellent supply and demand signals which we'll go into in a moment here are some excellent examples of the candles these pin bar candles we will find at these reversal points above or below the contraction line if we get this pin bar here it's showing you rejection to the downside whichever the major size wick is pointing in that is where the rejection is coming from which means it's reversing to the upside here is rejection to the upside and reversing to the downside 
Here's another example. We have a one hour reversal zone. As you can see, price once again, it breaks out of the contraction box, breaks up, breaks down, breaks up, breaks down, breaks up. The swings start expanding. And on each higher swing, we get these massive indecision candles, these big wicks, which represent to us a reversal and also shows us the liquidations that are happening. There's massive orders being filled at these points. We mark out these liquidity lines at the tips of these wicks. He has a 15 minute reversal zone and you can also see you can get a, a better entry on the 15 minutes and you can see we've got these big wicks, these reversal candles and at each swing high and swing low you can see they are present. Are you guys beginning to see how the structure works? This is a multi-leg expansion out of a contraction point. This is the point of origin. You can see our price keeps coming back, up, back, up. The banks are actually balancing their books based on this as its neutral zone. As price moves above the point of origin, we are only looking for shorts. And as price moves below the point of origin, we're only looking for longs. This is the best entry you will get for a long. And this is the best entry you'll get for a short. These are the safest points in which you can enter because these are the points where the banks are entering. And you want to enter with the liquidity what it will do is it'll give you the best risk to reward ratio and it'll be the least amount of emotional pain pleasure threshold you will be affected by at these points. Here is an example of bullish reversal candles. These are indecision candles called doji candles. These are happening at the furthest swing high or the swing low point from the point of origin. As you can see, we've got this massive wick and this little body rejecting to the downside, which means it's going to reverse upwards. Same thing here. We've got these gravestone doji, hardly any bodies, just wicks. This is what we're looking for. He has bearish reversal dojis above the point of origin. Nice pin bar rejecting to the upside, rejecting to the upside, rejecting to the upside. These are clear signals the market is reversing. And what we can do is once you see these, we can wait for the next candle and you can see it's an engulfing candle over here. It's an engulfing candle. Over here, we got this engulfing candle. So you can also enter off of the engulfing candle if you want extra confirmation. We use divergences on top of this as an extra confirmation for entry. I like to use Market Cipher. This is the free version, Vumanshu, and this is how you can add it to your charts. These are the exact settings that I'm using in case you're wondering. When we get these swing highs and swing low points above or below the point of origin, we look for reversal candles and divergences to time the entry perfectly. So as you can see, we got contraction zone, the point of origin, price whipsaws, these expansion legs, which expand higher swings as it moves away from the point of origin. And our entry zones long will be these indecision candles, the downside below the point of origin. And our entry shorts will be above the point of origin when we see these indecision candles by these liquidity points. And as an added confirmation, we can look at our divergence indicator to look for divergences at these points. So when we see price come below the point of origin, we look for our divergence and here's a divergence right here. This would have been a great entry. You would see this indecision candle, which would be one confirmation. You would see a divergence, be a second confirmation. It would be below the point of origin as a third confirmation to take a long entry. Price travels up, we get another divergence here. So we see an indecision candle, number one, we see a divergence, number two, and it is above the point of origin, number three. This would be a fantastic short entry. Price travels all the way down here, and here you go, we got another divergence. Confirmation number one, we've got indecision candle, rejection wicks to the downside, confirmation number two, and we've got it happening below the point of origin. Confirmation number three. Then price goes all the way up, taps into this liquidity. We get another big rejection candle, this indecision candle. We didn't quite get a divergence, but we got the divergence here. Yeah, so if we had waited, this would have actually been a great entry point. We could have still entered here and your stop loss would have been above the wick and you would have just had to wait longer. You could have taken profits down here or waited for price to travel down. Here are some more examples. Once again, we've got the point of origin. As soon as we get the expand high and expand low, it confirms this contraction line. And then we see price whipsawing and respecting this zone keeps coming back to the banks use this center point 
as a zero point for their books. At each swing high or swing low, we look for entries. We can look for divergences, indecision candles below the point of origin for long entries. For the top, we look for divergences, indecision candles above the point of origin. Number four, order block signals. Order blocks act as friction zones where we can find reversals. For extra confluence, finding those supply and demand zones. Here we go. We can see prices broken down in a trending phase to the downside. Get this massive rejection to the downside, which shows us that there's a reversal happening. Then we get a contraction zone. We mark out the contraction zone. As soon as we get the whipsaw up and down, we mark out the expansion line. And then we also mark out our supply and demand zones because they can act as even an extra confirmation on top of everything that we've already been going through. Here you can see we've got an imbalance, price taps in perfectly. We've got indecision candle, price taps in perfectly. Another one, price taps perfectly, price taps perfectly. So it didn't tap into all of them, but if we can add these onto the chart, they just add more confluence on top of the confirmation checklist that we're already looking for for entries. The best order blocks are always accompanied by a displacement of price. We get these big momentum candles over here. It indicates to us that there's volume, there's big orders being placed, and the big players are present in the market. Order block number one, normal order blocks. These are just the basic order blocks that everyone gets taught. It's the last up candle for a down move and the last down candle for an up move. We look for break-in structures which leave behind these zones. And these are lovely indecision candles, big wicks and little bodies, accompanied by break-in structures and displacement of price. Order block number two, indecision candles. They won't always be indecision candles, but indecision candles is a stronger confirmation, especially if it's on a higher time frame. I like to go the one hour, four hour, and even the daily to look for these indecision candles. If you find them on higher time frames, the higher the time frame, the stronger the confirmation. And as you can see, we have this displacement, break in structure, leaves behind indecision candle we mark it out taps into our zone perfectly here's more examples of indecision candles price respects these candles an indecision candle is a point where the market maker is equalizing the supply and demand ratio it's a reset of where they're going to take action that's why usually big moves happen after these candles here's some examples of indecision candles They've got long wicks and little bodies. Sometimes the bodies are so small or they can have big bodies and no wicks or big bodies and little bits of wicks. Order block number three, engulfed candles. These are great indications. As soon as we get engulfing candle to the downside that has momentum, we can see the candle before it acts as the order block. Here you can see engulfing candle, candle before is the order block. Using engulfing structures, here's some more examples. We've got this big candle, which is like displacements, and the one before it acts as the order block. You see, because if we get a big move happening in the market is where the order was placed. And there we know on this zone, that is where orders are being filled. Here you go, displacement, big momentum candle, candle before it, we mark it out. I like to mark it out from the body here to the top of the wick, but you can also use from wick to wick. Here are some more engulfing structures. We've got this big displacement candle to the downside, leaves behind our order block. This candle engulfs this candle. This candle engulfs this candle. This is where the massive order was just placed. You can see by the size of the candle. Regardless of what kind of order block it is, the main thing we're looking for is strong market structure breaks accompanied to identify quality order blocks. Here we can see lower high, lower low, low high, low low. And at this point we get a higher high, which is our change in character. Usually it's accompanied by this displacement of price. And that is where you will find an order block. You can also look for indecision candles and engulfing candles. And then at every point we get a break of structure, we usually find an order block break of structure. We look to see where the order blocks coincide with contraction zones and liquidity lines to build a story as to where we will get these reversal zones. Let us have a look at the charts now. Here we go, I'm on a crypto coin, CHZ USDT, and I wanna show you guys, I'm just gonna take it back a little bit. Here we go. So we usually get a range, you can see this range, and then we get this break in structure and this trend to the downside. Then price settles, 
And that's when we start to look for contraction zones. Contraction zones are created by a lower high and a higher low. As you can see, we've got a lower high, higher low. So this becomes our contraction zone. As soon as we get this whipsaw up and down, that is the point we can draw this expansion line, which confirms that this is the balance point for the market makers. And as you can see, price is working and respecting this line. Okay, expands up, expands down, expands up, and expands down. Once price whipsaws up and whipsaws down, it does this to liquidate the retailer. Every time it expands past the points, we can add our liquidity lines. So it expands down, the top one gets created, it expands up past, the bottom one gets created. At each point, we add these liquidity lines. These are the points where we will either enter the market or take profits and exit the market. And you can see it starts to build this frame-like structure that gives us an easy way to see how the market is behaving. Price whipsaws up, whipsaws down, confirms a contraction line, and at each one of these high points, these are the points we want to get entries into the market. We look at these indecision candles as confirmations for entries, that there is rejection to the upside or rejection to the downside, rejection to the upside. This lets us know that there's massive orders being filled at these points or liquidations happening, which is the stop losses of the masses that are being triggered. You see, if the institution wants to enter into the market, they can only enter when they have lots of liquidity, which means they need to trick the retailer. When the retailer makes a mistake, that is when they get into the market because now they have the liquidity necessary to fill their big orders. What happens is it breaks out of this box over here. The retailer decides they want to go long and they drive price down. Retailer gets liquidated. As price breaks below value, see this big candle, the retailer would decide to go short because they think the market's going down. Market maker drives the price up liquidates the retailer at this point. The reason it is these points because typically a stop loss will be placed above the most recent high or low swing point. So you place your stop loss over here. And that's why when this candle comes over here, it triggers all the stop losses. And that's why you see this volume in this candle. So in this strategy, we are looking for contraction zones, number one. Then we're looking for the swing high and swing low. Typically, we get this whipsaw action, which is designed to take out the retailer's liquidity so that the banks can accumulate positions at favorable prices. Once they've accumulated positions at favorable prices, then they can drive the market to even higher swings. So it breaks up and then eventually it breaks this range and trends down here. And then the same process starts to happen all over again. What we would do now over here is we would wait for a contraction zone and then the whipsaw action and then we'd be able to plot our entry points. We would enter our short positions over here. Our minimum target would be the point of origin. We can take half profits off the table and then we can let it run until we see indecision candles. Another way we can get our entries is by using divergences on a lower time frame. All we need to do is wait for the contraction or wait for whips or up, whips or down, and then we've confirmed, then we've confirmed our expansion line. And then at our next high and low, we can actually start to see how these swings are happening. Then we can go into a lower time frame, like a 15 minute or a five minute, and we start to look for divergences. As you can see, breaks down here, we got a divergence, this would be an entry comes up here, we've got a divergence, this would be an entry down, comes down, divergence, this would be an entry up. So we can use divergences as an extra form of confirmation. We're only looking for shorts above the point of origin. We're only looking for longs below the point of origin. Entering over here, we see prices below the contraction point. We notice an indecision wick, this big rejection to the downside. We come onto our divergence Vuman Shu and we see perfect divergence. This would give us very strong signals that we can enter a long position. Same thing would happen here. Price would go above the value line. So now our bias is looking for shorts. We can see this rejection wick and we see a divergence. Three confirmations for us to enter this trade. Price comes down below value again. We see another divergence. We see these lovely indecision candles we enter a long position. We could have entered directly after this engulfing candle, stop loss below the wick, 
and we can minimum target would be the value line maximum target would be the liquidation line or the liquidity line of the previous swing let's have a look if we can spot the structure on another chart so let's come to Bitcoin on a higher time frame here we are at Bitcoin on a higher time frame one hour time frame I like to use the one hour and the four hour time frame for this so we're looking for a contraction point that contains these multi-leg expansions. And as you can see, this is where they're located over here. Swing low, swing high, swing low. This would be the zone. Price breaks up, breaks down, confirms the expansion line. You can see we get expansion outside the box, below the box, above the box, just below it, above it. Price plays around these points. Then we get these liquidations, indecision candles. These would be our entries and could be our exits as well. We can go into a lower time frame, 15 minutes, and then we can start using our divergence as an extra form of confluence. Price expands high. We see this wick. We didn't get a divergence, but our divergence came over here. This would have been our entry. Stop loss above the highest wick. Our minimum target would have been point of origin. Could have taken half off the table, then let the other half right until we get another liquidation point or divergence. Price comes down, it's under value line. We get indecision candles, confirmation number two. We've got this massive momentum to the downside, which is showing us that it's hitting a bottom. But our entry point would have been this trigger wave over here, showing that massive candle less of a massive candle which is showing momentum is actually turning to the upside could have entered our long position right here a minimum profit would have been the value line stop loss below the the wick could have taken half profit and let the rest run until we got more of these liquidation wicks which happened over here price comes above we get this massive liquidation wick on the swing high confirmation number one confirmation number two above the point of origin and number three we would have got momentum candle, trigger candle. This could have been our entry point over here. It shows momentum moving towards the downside where we've got momentum coming upside here. So we've got a divergence. Would have entered at the sign of the divergence, stop loss above the wick. Minimum target would be at the value line. Once price gets there, we take half profits and we let the rest run. And as you can see in this situation, price respected the point of origin here which shows that banks, institutions are favoring higher prices. That's where they want to run the price. We can see we got this massive momentum candle, which shows us hitting a bottom. And then at this trigger wave would have been the entry. Can you see how we can combine the Vumanshu divergences with all these other price action signals? This could have been our entry over here, stop loss below the wick. And this we could have gone up to our liquidation point over here. We wouldn't have known that it would have come this high. And price comes up, we get another indecision candle wick with a divergence over here. We could have taken a nice little sculpt short over here. Let's go back to the higher time frame. So you can see as price whipsaws and expands these multi legs outside of the contraction zone, they get bigger and bigger. It's just practicing and knowing how to get into these entries. But once you're aware of the contraction zone, it shows you where to enter longs, where to enter shorts. You have a framework by which you can understand entries and exits more clear. And then on top of that, we can start adding order blocks. So you can see break in structures over here. Here would have been an order block. Could have entered off this. Another order block over here. Respected it. So on top of using the contraction zone, the liquidity points, point of origin, as well as the supply and demand order blocks and divergences. We have many tools to utilize to find confirmations and good entries and exits. We have to look at everything in a holistic way, the more factors in our favor. If you're enjoying this video, smash that subscribe button guys, so I can continue to bring you high quality value. Hope you enjoyed this video. Test it out. Please bring any questions that you have and happy trading.